Welcome back to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're talking about what's new in Reaper 6.65 and 6.66. We're gonna start off with some changes to the effects browser. Allow configuring defaults per plugin of want all keyboard, TCP, MCP embedding, and oversampling, and move compatibility settings to submenu. So if we take one of these plugins, right click, go to default settings for new instances. We can send all keyboard input to the plugin. We can show the UI in the TCP or the MCP and enable oversampling for this plugin. So each time that we load this plugin, we don't need to change these types of settings. The compatibility options are now in this window as well. And if you were wondering, the compatibility settings are still there. We can still change the oversampling here. We can send all keyboard input to plugins. Uh, but this is only going to affect this instance, whereas the changes in the context menu within the effects browser will be for all instances, you know, the next time and continually. Support decoding RX2 files on native Apple Silicon. So for the past year or so, the universal build of Reaper hasn't been able to uh, support Rex files. And this has now been added again. So I've got a bunch of Rex files going back to 2008, I think. So now these play perfectly fine in Media Explorer. And I can import them into the file. I can make them a single loopable file, beat slices, things like that. Yeah, you know, just as you would expect, as it has always worked on the Intel build of Reaper and on Windows. And that means I can just continue to hoard these old files for the rest of my life. MIDI editor, Actions to move edit cursor by grid, respect snap settings. So when using actions like this, move edit cursor right by grid or move edit cursor left by grid, if we have the magnet icon in our toolbar active, left or right is what I have my keyboard set to, but those actions, they will move on the grid lines. And if we turn this off and click somewhere in between, and I use the left or right keyboard shortcuts again, that's going to use the same relative position, but the next grid segment. So if I set this to half note grid, it's gonna to jump to there. If I set this to 32nd note, it's gonna move by one 32nd note, but keeping that position in between until I turn on snap and then it's going to go to exactly the next grid position, whether that's eighth note, quarter note, very small change. I think this is more intuitive now. This is probably how you thought it worked, if you ever thought about it. But yeah, that's how it works now. Mouse modifiers, add razor edit mouse modifier to move or tilt envelope fine adjustment. So this is just a modification of a mouse modifier that was already there, just allowing for finer increments of movement. We're gonna open up the preferences and then go to editing behavior and mouse modifiers going to find razor edit envelope area. So we've got move or tilt envelope vertically and move or tilt envelope vertically fine. So this is on command option. That would be control alt on windows. Let's make a razor edit area. Uh, so around the middle point of this or where that envelope line is uh, at the edges, that's a tilt function. So we can raise or lower it within the center, or again, at the edges, we can tilt that. If we hold down the command and option keys, that will now move in very fine increments. So that's a 0.01 decibel uh, rather than 0.1. So that's a nice, helpful new mouse modifier. Routing, grouping, render matrix, add context, specific help, accessible via the question mark button. All right, so we're gonna go to the view menu and open the routing matrix. We've got this question mark button here. And if I click that, a pop-up window arrives with some information about the routing window, uh, how to use it, shortcuts, things like that. The wiring diagram does not have that function. We go to the grouping. There is a question mark here and we can go through the grouping help and the region render window has that as well. So three new help documents 
accessible through uh, their respective window. There are a bunch of changes to panning. Explicitly support sign taper, linear taper, and hybrid taper pan functions. Special case, minus three and minus six pan loss to be exactly equivalent to constant power and constant gain. Preserve existing settings in existing projects. Fix implementation of hybrid taper pan law when applying gain compensation. Simplify pan law preferences. Only list deprecated pan mode in pan law dialog if the project already has pan mode set that way. So the short version of this is if you have a preferred way to pan things and it's already in use in your projects and in your templates, nothing has to change for you. You can continue using those templates and it will sound exactly as it was. Any flaws of Reaper's pan modes and pan laws that you're used to using, that's still going to work for you because the deprecated modes and pan laws are going to be available within those older projects and templates. So your old projects aren't going to change. And for everyone else and making new projects without your previous templates, these are going to follow the new pan laws, pan modes, and everything is going to be more correct. There's so many different ways to do pan laws and everything. Many times they've changed this over the years and uh, they're trying to simplify this, make it just a couple different ways rather than you know, a variety of combinations. So let's look at that. So we're going to go to File and Project Settings and go to Advanced. And we've got pan laws in this window. So pan laws, we've got the 0, minus 2.5, minus 3, minus 4.5, and minus 6 dB pan laws. We also have gain compensation where we can boost the pans. There is a sign taper, linear taper, and hybrid taper drop down menu. And then for pan mode, we have stereo balance, mono pan, stereo pan, or dual pan. Stereo pan is the one that has a width control. Dual pan gives you separate left and right uh, position or channel one and channel two positions that can be panned any direction. And generally speaking, these pan law functions don't really change the sound of things. Pan law is mostly for when you're moving something, when you're automating the pan, um, do you hear the center a little bit louder than if it's panned hard left? Or if you pan it hard to the left, is that going to be boosted so that it sounds as loud as if it was in the center? Um, because it's playing out of one speaker louder versus both speakers equally. Then there's also the pan law that gets applied when you send one track into another. You can run into the situation where sending one track into another, it loses a little bit of volume each time. And so that's where the zero dB pan law, which is the default, is always recommended. The in-between positions, that's where the sine taper, linear taper, and hybrid taper make the difference. Just in the subtle differences um, when it's slightly off center, when it's slightly off of hard pan, all the in-between positions there, that's where there's slight differences in these different modes. So you may remember that there was a 3x mode uh, in previous versions of Reaper and said deprecated. And that mode is basically gone. That mode was only there for compatibility reasons with older projects. But you can see here that it's sort of like this, with sort of a scooped mode. <laughs> and as usual, if you right click on any of the pan knobs, you have the option to override the default pan law here and also the pan mode. Now the difference between sine taper, linear taper, hybrid taper, honestly, that goes over my head. When to use gain compensation or not, that goes over my head. I'm gonna use the default sine taper with zero dB pan law, and I'm just not gonna worry about it. I gotta make that decision to just not worry about it because for me, it, there's so many other things to worry about in a mix, I cannot think about panning. I'm going to put a link to this website. This uh, this was linked by Schwa in the forum um, about the different panning modes, um, linear panning, constant power panning, uh, minus 4.5 pan law. I guess that's the hybrid. I don't really know. I haven't had a chance to read this fully. Again, this is something that just goes over my head. It's a lot of math. And at the end of the day, it's it's not going to make my mixes better probably won't make your mixes better either. But if you want to really dive into that and understand it fully, go right ahead. 
it, it seems like every couple of years we got to relearn pan law, uh, and it's uh, it, it's worse than bird law. Let's move on. For rendering, add post render button to display rendered file in Media Explorer. So I'm just going to render this time selection here. And so now there's three buttons at the bottom, launch file, which will open this file into a media player. Open folder will open up Finder or Explorer, depending on the operating system. And then Media Explorer will bring this file into view within Reaper's own Media Explorer. And so you can see that there, untitled.wave, and it's selected. A super small change, but helpful nonetheless. And the last thing to talk about is a slight change to preferences. Move media, video, and media import preferences to separate pages. So instead of everything kind of crammed into the video page or video slash import, the video page is cleaned up, just the relevant video options there. And then on the import page, what to do with media that has embedded slice information or tempo information, that sort of thing. So not really anything new, just a reorganization of two kind of separate things related to media, but the import functions are not related to the video functions. Again, not a big change, but helpful. So that's what's new in these recent updates. If you missed any of the previous videos, there's a big playlist going all the way back to Reaper 5.0 linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.